Tá. Aí eu tô aqui. Hã? Você vai precisar, você sabe o meu ali, é um 303, né? Não, foda-se esse link aí, cara. Depois a gente vai, vai ver essa porra. Deixa, deixa o Instagram fazer nosso... Porque o Instagram não deixa dar link, entendeu? Você teria que postar nos stories com um coisa... All right. Testing, one, two, three. Sound is good. Sounds good. Okay. for it. They are waiting, they are ready, it's all live, right? Yeah. On Instagram. So, for our Hanzo Gracie followers, I'm not Hanzo, right? So, you know that. Uh, I'm Luca Tala, I'm here with Leandro Slide. Uh, we are at Hanzo Gracie, Upper West Side, and um, We, we have a lot of things to talk because it's except, it, we are living in excep, exceptional times. You know, we, we have for the first time this facility closed. You know, we are not running classes, trying to prevent the spreading of the coronavirus. And we took the tough decision of like closing our academies, not only Hanzo Gracie Upper West Side, but also Hanzo Gracie Headquarters and Chelsea, New York, and Hanzo Gracie uh, Fight Academy uh, in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Uh, are you sure we're live? Yes? Okay. So, um, I mean, Hanzo posted today why we are closing. Uh, we are not necessarily afraid of our own health, right? We are more concerned about, you know, being an agent uh, or having our students to be agents of this nasty virus. You know, we are not joking. I, 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 I don't think this is, a, you know, a simple uh, disease. I think it's very serious for certain groups of people. And we decide together to close the facilities. And we are going to try to mitigate this somehow. You know, one of the, 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 the ways teaching uh, live classes online, right? So uh, we have almost nobody here, just uh, two cameramen, myself and uh, Leandro, today. Tomorrow, uh, Renzo himself will teach the class at 6 p.m. New York time. Um, we plan to do it every day, every weekday at 6 p.m., at least, you know, and we are going to follow our curriculum here of Hanzo Gracie Upper West Side. This is an interesting uh, opportunity. I know you want to maybe uh, look in, into the positions and everything, but I, I think we should talk a little bit more. And uh, Hanzo Gracie Upper West Side was uh, launched uh, almost a year ago. On March 25th, we opened the, the doors after one year building up this place. And so far we, we have, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm humbly saying that I, I'm involved with Jiu Jitsu for almost 30 years now. And I never seen one academy. It may 
happened before, but I'm not aware of, uh, that in one year, less than a year, you know, got over 500 students, right? And there are a few different uh, reasons for this, uh, let's say, success. And I believe one of them is the program and the way we teach the classes. And there's nothing crazy about the way that our program, not, nothing so different. But um, instead of having fixed classes, uh, like regular curriculums, we have the cycle of the jiu-jitsu on the ground. Of course, we have also the self-defense part, we have the trolls, we have, you know, uh, things standing up. But, you know, the ground part, it's a cycle There we go over situations of jiu-jitsu. So we start uh, working on the mount, for instance, just because we are going to work on the mount. It's, it's the, it, uh, it's, it doesn't matter where you are on the cycle because you are going to go over and over and over again. But at this point, we are on the mount, right? Mount situation from the top. So how it works? Let's say we, you start the, the uh, uh, you enter the academy today, and uh, it's your first day here. You are going to, to have this class, and we, you are going to drill without resistance with a training partner, and over you know a few moves we are going to show a few concepts we are going to to, to teach. And after uh, the technical part, we are going to shake hands. Not necessarily now, because we have nobody here, but you know, in a usual times we shake hands and we finish the class. And then the second class will follow up. It will be a specific training. We go over situational uh, training with resistance. So if we thought about the mount, the attacks from the mount, we probably will uh, follow uh, by specific training on, uh, you know, you are going to mount a training partner and he will resist, right? For this part of the class or for this separate class, you need to, be, to have at least three months of training to participate, right? And this situ situational uh, takes 15 minutes. And then we go to the live roles. And uh, before we start the live roles, we finish one class, which uh, is called specific training class. And we start the handori, which is the Japanese word for live roles, right? And uh, for these live roles, you probably have six months or more of jiu-jitsu experience to participate of course there are exceptions uh, you know people who came from a wrestling background people who came from you know judo or other martial arts and and they are already used to the the, the sparring part but uh if you start today it's probably it's going to take six months for you to participate of this handori class all right in terms of the cycle you know, from the mount on top, we are going to go over ways to keep the mount, ways to attack from the mount, ways to progress to the back, back takes. Not today, of course, we are going to go over, you know, the amount of moves we do in a regular class today, but uh, regularly, you know, during this cycle, this part of the cycle, it's one week or two weeks, and then we we start like working on the back how to attack from the back and then you get another week of back attacks back takes back you know how to keep uh the back take and then we finish this part and we go to the guard which is the heart of jiu-jitsu as master hickson says and we, the guard from the bottom first. And then you, you, you understand what is the guard. How do, uh, do you use your legs to protect yourself? How do you use your legs to attack? How do you use your legs 
to keep the guy to mount on you, to keep the guy to, to, to be in a, you know, a superior position, and how to take the guy off balance with your legs, right? How to annoy the guy with your legs. And that's the guard part. And it takes like three weeks, more or less. And then we go to the side control uh, on the bottom. And then you go for ways to protect yourself if someone is on your side control. And then you go to um, mount from the bottom. Someone is mounted on you, how to protect yourself, how to escape, how to recover guard, how to end on top, right? And then you go to the back from the, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the side, the, the aspect of someone who is being attacked, right? And then you go, you know, and back escapes, back survivors, survival, until you, when you feel turtle survival, turtle escapes, and then you go to uh, uh, guard pass. So now you are on top and you need to deal with the legs. And then you go for the guard pass, another couple weeks, three weeks. And then you go to the side control on top. How to stay there on side control, how to attack, how to improve, how to progress to the mount, how to progress to a, to a back take. And this is another two, three weeks. And then you come back where we started today, which is the mount um, situation, right? And from the top, not from the bottom. And then we are going to go, you know, we are going to, to uh, go in a very simple way about the mount uh, position. Uh, Leandro is actually, you know, way more uh, versed on mount position than I do. He does it very well. It's super hard to escape from his mount. Uh, you know, but I, I have a pretty decent mount as well. And there are, the, the other thing that we make sure on our uh, program here is to uh, don't think in jiu-jitsu like a right way to do and a wrong way to do. I have my ways to address the mount. He has his ways to address the mount. Roger Gracie has his ways to address the mount. You know, and other people, and they will say, oh, Roger taught me different, okay? You know, Roger has his ways. He's the best in the world in the mount position. You know, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I, I have to do something different from my biotype. Uh, I love his position. I'm just giving examples, right? And, uh, but you, one thing that we allow the structures to do here on Hanzo Gracie Upper West Side is to be uh, free-minded and to teach. We believe on their knowledge so much that we can trust on them to teach. Not going over a situation that we didn't predict. They are not inventing a, a new situation in Jiu-Jitsu, but you know, Professor Thiago will do in a, in a way, Leandro will do in another way, I will do in another way, and you know, gas structures Hans will do another way, Hobson will do another way, you know, whoever will be here teaching about the mount, you have the free mind, you know, we trust on them, they, they can, you know, teach you a very decent uh, way of stay on the mount and attacking from the mount. So, let's go here on the mount. And one Sorry. thing that I like, I'm not a, 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 a big guy, right? So, for me, the rule of thumb, if I use the mount or not, usually is the size of my training partner. Because if I mount someone and I cannot touch my knees on the ground, I don't feel comfortable the way I use the mount. Because my way to, to address the mount is not seated on him here, especially the low mount. You know, I don't feel comfortable having my weight on him. My weight is on the ground here. You know, I'm in base here. I'm in good balance. My weight is on the ground here. And I will address his reactions accordingly here. But in base, not sitting on him, right? This is for the low mount, right? If I go for a high mount, I may feel comfortable sitting on him. This is a little different. Now, I'm, you know, I'm, my weight is on him here. 
But usually, when I start the thing, I, my weight is on my knees, not on him, right? And then, if he doesn't do anything here, I will start my attacks here. I will start, like, you know, opening the collar here and getting, you know, in a position for instance, uh, cross-collar choke. The, the real thing for me here, the key thing, you know, is uh, not to give space between my grip and his and my hip, right? Because this thing annoys a lot. Usually when I, I allow him to do this defense, I start over again, right? I start with a shallow grip in base here, posted, and I start sliding my grip, but you know, it's hard to see, but I don't give any space for him to swim under here, right? And I'm still in base, my body weight is on this side here. I will need to switch my body weight to this side to choke him, right? If I do this without, uh, uh, you know, just, you know, straightforward, probably he was going to bump me, bump, and I'm going to, you know, lose the, the mount position, right? I may still have, depending on my grips, I may still have the choke. But, uh, you know, uh, ideally, I want to choke him and be on top. So what I do, my body weight distribution is here. And I'm going, you know, before attacking his collar, I'm going to, to switch my body weight, but posted here. So now it's hard for him to bump. Oh, I'm posted, right? Now I'm going to use my, my forehead on the ground to be, a, uh, be able to take my hand off the ground here, right? Now my hand goes on his collar here and I'm going to shave and choke him, right? So I'm doing all steps posted ideally right this is a little different than trying to post from here for instance with my forehead this is i i, I think is very dangerous for your neck because if he bumps here and i try to post here this is a huge impact here it's different i'm already posted and i place my forehead without the bump and then i start looking for the collar here it's hard to see, I know, filming this is so hard. And if I take my head off here to finish the motion, you know, you are going to see better, but then I'm in my, my way to see this position, I'm not in, a, in, the, in, in my ideal base, right? I prefer to be low and posted and do everything here to finish, right? That's my way to address the cross collar choke. So, starting here, always opening the collar, getting a shallow grip here, and sliding. Posted here. When I go to the other side, I go already posted, place my forehead, grab his collar here, and shave him to finish. Yeah. It's a good thing, you know, so here, you know, I go from here where my body weight is. Here is hard for him to post, to, to throw me that way there. I totally posted here and, you know, my body weight is here yet. So still, so I go all the way here. Now, you know, I'm pretty much bumping unless the guy is so much longer than me, taller than me, that, you know, my post here is not enough. Right? But usually my post here is enough, my forehead here is enough, and then I start like working. Oh, I'm taking my head off just to show you the details, but the idea here is to keep the head low, right? I'm going to grab here and shave him to get the position. First, on this case in particular, there are different ways of applying the cross collar choke. The first hand is palm up. The second hand is palm down, right? So I'm doing this, right? Instead of here. For this particular uh, way to address this, right? 
there are different ways. I told I, I told you that we are going to talk a little bit about you know how to keep them out. One important thing is that he's going to use his hands to bump you, especially right after you mount, right? You know, so you can deal with, you know, pushes here, you can swing, you can, you know, uh, use your hips here. That's why I like to be in base here. You know, one way that kind of address several different forms for him to attempt to move me is if I feel it's too hard, I go low and I grab his head here and keep my, you know, I'm, I'm hooking here his legs and keeping my hips low here. So this is usually, you know, in a moment of stress to weather the storm, I use this, right? Okay, for this position, you know, I'm going to give now the words to Leandro because he does it very well, this way of like, you know, um, addressing the mount and uh, believe, you know, if he mounts on me, I do my best, but it's, it, and I, I have a pretty decent uh, escape from the mount, but it's almost impossible to escape. So, Leandro, it's with you. <laughs> so, I do pretty, the, pretty much the, the same thing from here, like in terms of low mount, but what I like, so for me, I, I, I like to split Jiu-Jitsu in, in three parts, which is defend, defense, control, and attack. Even here, which is an attack position, I think in terms of defense, I, in terms of I don't want to lose the position. If I'm here, for me, the mount position, position is the number one, the, 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 the best position is Jiu-Jitsu. So if I mount on Luca, which would be difficult to, to get in onto him, if I get it, I don't want to lose. So first thing is to defend my my my, my mount. So it's pretty much staying here so you cannot get out. When you feel you're safe and he not, will not bump you, not bridge, so you cannot get out, I like doing what he just did, which is holding the, the neck and extending my legs with well, where my, my, my knees almost get off the floor. So looking sideways, I, I'm gonna cross my, my, my feet and stay very heavy on him, okay? So at the moment I decide to do this, I don't have my hands anymore, so maybe he can throw me to the, to the side that I don't have the hand. So as, at the moment that I, that I decide to hold his, his head, I will have to put all my weight to the other side. So here he cannot throw me because I have the, my, 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 my arm protecting me, and in the other side will be pretty difficult because all my weight it's here, and when I hold him, I prevent him, prevent him to, to have the, the leverage to bridge because he doesn't have the head on the floor. When I take the head off, the bridge, we can say the bridge will be very hard for him to, to do. So what I like to do here is crossing my feet, extend my legs, and, and I'm gonna be very heavy on him, giving the, holding his, his head so he cannot go for the bridge. Okay, so I'm here. Now I'm gonna do the same choke that Professor Luca just did, but I will start directly from here. So I'm gonna use one, my thumb in, and I'm gonna stay here. So the guy doesn't really know what is coming from, from this hand, okay? And then, as I have all my way to this side, it's gonna be pretty easy for me to go around and then close my elbow. As Professor Luca just said, I will close my elbow. If I just do like this, the pressure is so hard because it, it, when it comes from behind, my hand from behind, it's very deep. So my, my grip here is very deep. deep. And th this is one of the most important things on the, on the chokes. So just a matter of putting my elbow down and opening, he's, he's gonna start to feel very uncomfortable, okay? So I still have my pressure there, boom. So it's gonna be very hard for him even to to try to push uh, my, my knees. His hips are so heavy on me now that I have, and it's super hard for me also to turn my, my body sideways. Yeah. I need angle to escape, and he's killing my angle, making me flat and straight forward to the ceiling here. So you it's know? pretty much the same show from here that we just did. 
but I'm gonna be a little bit more flat and, and here, okay? So again, it's one, two. I, I, I'm closing the elbow, finding my right connection here, and so he cannot use yeah. the, the arm yeah. to defend yeah. himself. Yeah. I still have all my way to the other side so he cannot bump me and not bridge me off him. And then I'm gonna do just as he did. One, two, head to the floor, and then I will just go other tummy. So in this choke, I'm gonna have both hands, four fingers out, one finger in. So again, I'm here, he doesn't have the bridge. Uh, and I cannot turn towards that side there yeah, because yeah. you know oh, there's no elbow speed. That's what I would say. What I like the most here, yeah, one of the things that I like the most is keeping the pressure sometimes with my chest, sometimes with my my shoulder on him, so he cannot look to the other side. He cannot like he will do just what I want him to do. It's like a car. If you cannot turn the car, the car is gonna stay here, and that's what I want. So when, sometimes I still like like to put his, his head on my, yeah. on my chest so he cannot breathe, so he can get a little desperate and give me something here. So that's what I like. I like to, to, to kind of play with the guy, staying heavy on him all the way from, from the very low to his head. I'm heavy, so all my pressure is on his face, okay, my, on, on my upper body. So the only time that I'm gonna take the pressure off his face is when I, I decide to turn and go for the choke. And then one, two, two. Four head on the floor. Oh, it's hard for me to bridge. He's already almost tapping here. Yeah, exactly. You know, the bridge it would be this 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 way here because you know I have nothing the other way. And here uh, he's totally completely posted. Right? So, so it's then pretty you much go four, four, one finger in, four fingers out, and then I'm gonna kind of shave him. Boom. And choke. It's very important to understand that the choke is not opening your, your elbows, okay, like a scissor. It's, it's, it's more about co connecting the, the elbows to your hips boom, and trying to be as close as you can to the guy. It's not about doing like this, it's boom. Okay, so we are here. I don't want to open. It's about like boom. So that's where the guy's gonna tap like in, in a second. Uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show from here. What interesting on this situation here, and we are we are giving zero resistance to each other here, but it's it's already annoying in a way that uh, when we we talk about a real situation with resistance, uh, even with a good defense. People don't allow you to get the colors. You know, the way he mounts annoys me in a way that, you know, it's so uncomfortable that sometimes, you know, I give him something in desperation. You know, I'm trying to escape because I don't want to stay there anymore. Unless you are very used to this kind of, uh, let's say, smashing and the kind of pressure and, you know, suffocating you have without even, a, you know, a, a choke, you probably will give something to him and he's going to take advantage of it. And many times it's not even the choke, you know, sometimes it's like the back, sometimes it's an yeah. arm lock, you know. We are going to see over the week a lot of different options, right? But uh, here are, you know, the, the classic cross collar choke, and uh, two different perspectives. Yeah, so right. what I said, I, I like to, to split the jiu-jitsu in three parts, which uh, is defense, control, and attack. And even in, in, in terms of import, uh, like the first one, uh, defense is the most important one for me, and control is, is, is very, very important. If I don't have control of him, maybe I can uh, submit him, but if I have control, which is here, and I stay here for 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, doesn't matter. The guy's gonna first get tired, second, get very first frustrated. So in term, uh, it's a matter of time for him to try to get out and give me something. So I can stay here, no matter that, like, no matter what, no matter how long, boom, I'm gonna be like playing here with him. If he maybe do something good, I can change and go to the other side and boom, I stay here. 
when I feel is the right time that I have the right control, then I go for the attack, which is the third part for me. The last important, we can say, but if you don't have the defense, the controlling part, I won't be able to, to go for the, for the, the attacks, we, which is our main goal, okay? So even attacking is our, being our main goal, if I don't have the two previous parts, it's gonna be difficult to get here. I don't want to lose the position, and I want to be in the right time to go for the attack. So that's what I, I mean about defending, controlling, and then attacking. Yeah? Yes, you know. So one interesting thing, you know, I, you know, I try, I, we, in our classes, we try not only teach moves, but teach a way of thinking, teach the mindset, teaching the jiu-jitsu concepts, is, you know, a uh, few years ago, probably more than a few, probably 15 years ago, uh, I was in Brazil in a juice house, and then I met uh, Master Hickson, and he was, you know, we, are, we were chatting, and he, he come to me and uh, you know, uh, touch my shoulders like this, and ask me, uh, sorry, uh, are you annoyed by this? I said, I said, no. I said, okay. And then he started like, you know, a conversation. And he asked me, what is jiu-jitsu? And then I, I was trying to elaborate, you know, and you know, I, I gave my, my thoughts, but he, what he, he, he really wanted is to stay a couple minutes talking, allowing me to talk. And he was like this. And then in the end, or uh, you know, like two, three minutes, I don't know how, how, how long I, I, I spoke, he came to me and said, he, he, I, am I annoying you? And I said, yes, it's heavy. And he uh, stopped the conversation and said, this is jiu-jitsu. And this is to me was one of the, 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 the master classes I had with Master Hickson. Because, you know, he taught me that jiu-jitsu is... is uh, the art of annoying and making your opponent uncomfortable, always uncomfortable, right? Not necessarily it's easier said than done, than done, but my mindset is to make my training partner, my opponent, my competitor, you know, uncomfortable. And even if he's a little more uncomfort uncomfortable than that I am, than I am, it's a good position. I'm going to change the position if I, I see an, uh, you know, an opportunity to seize another position that is even more uncomfortable to, the, to, to them. And that's why uh, Leandro's mouth is so good because he makes you uncomfortable and makes you want to be outside and he's, he's very comfortable the whole time. He's not, you know, he's not spending any energy on the on this. Yeah, on just this a matter thing. Of, yeah. of balance, balancing uh, connections and and positioning. So this is it for today, right? You know, I think we we cover a little bit of the mount. We are going to go over a lot of different things. I'm, you know, I want to see, you know, tomorrow when I tell Master Hanzo that he he he's going for the mount. You know, his approach. It's been a long time that I don't see, he's so good on the side control that, you know, usually all the, the attacks are from the side control. And... Uh, uh, well, the, the, let me just add something here. Yes. Which, which is, which is important, which is important, and it's difficult to see if I don't, if I don't tell you. So one thing that I like to do here to... Uh, it's, impo it's impossible for him to get out if he's flat on the floor with his hips. So he, or he needs to bridge, or he needs to, to yeah. stay sideways to, to yeah. push the you out. The contact of my hips on the ground, and I, and I can show you this, you know, on the bridge here, I need to have, you know, the, the, my hips here so I can bridge, you yeah. know? And uh, what he does is taking my hips off the ground. Yeah, right? so yeah. I, there, there are two things. Like, sometimes I take it off the floor and sometimes I, I let it like very flat on the floor so you cannot move. The second one, it's a matter of when I'm here. So if he tries to bump me to that side, so this part of my body, my hips, going to go down to try to pull him back on the floor. So he's going to do like uh. this. So he cannot, he doesn't have the leverage. If you go to the other side, 
I'm gonna do like this. And that's the, that's the game. So I'm gonna be here. Flat, heavy, and boom. It's boom. so annoying. Boom. So the guy get very frustrated because he used to, everybody used to, to get out to, to, with a bridge. So when you avoid the guy to do the bridge, he doesn't know, wait, how, how am I gonna get out from here? So he start to try to push you. That's where he gives you the neck. So this one is something very important, very nice that I learned maybe 12, I don't know how many years ago, Hayan showed me back in Brazil. His and brother, Hayan, late Hayan. And I, I never forget it. I, I use it every, every, every time that I go to the mount, I go for the cross behind, and then I use my, my hips to avoid the guy taking the, the hip off the floor, which is how he get out. If he doesn't have it, it's impossible for him to get out. All right, look, look at this. You know, you may be at home, you know, it's 4.30 uh, p.m. on Sunday and you may not, you know, have a training partner there. Um, okay, you know, you can drill uh, by yourself a little bit with the mount, you know, thinking about, you know, being comfortable here, not, you know, having, if you are using my approach, uh, you are not having, you put your, think about being aware of your weight on your knees, not on, on, on the, the person. If you think about, you know, what Leandro just said, you know, the way he, he moved his hips in a, in a very, uh, you know, mindful way, depending on my reaction, you know, uh, this is a thing that you can do by yourself. Uh, uh, if you have a dummy, you know, I don't, I don't even know, I don't have a dummy, I don't even know, you know, the brand, so I'm not advertising for anyone, but, you know, for these days, we don't know how long we are going to stay uh, without training to other partners, you know, depends a lot on you also, not only, uh, you know, um, on us, and depends of, you know, the, the, the society in general. Yeah, you can, you can yeah. try with your kids. Yeah, maybe exactly. Maybe your wife. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good actually to let them try on you because they are lighter than you. And you see, when you start teaching and trying to adjust them, the, you know, you may be uh, better on the position, right? And uh, of course, if you have kids, you know, uh, as big as you, as, you know, have as you, uh, it's good for you if you have if your wife also does you know or you know maybe another uh, another person on the family who practices jiu jitsu so i cannot solve unfortunately you know i know that it's the solution we are giving it's not a solution it's an alternative right and ideally then, and then, we will be here training and then huh? when we come back to the regular classes we're gonna practice what we we are gonna do for the those this, this next weeks yeah. that we're going live or, yeah. or or online, we're gonna practice again here. So yeah, it's gonna be easy. So again, we uh, at Hanzo Gracie Upper West Side, the Hanzo Crazy headquarters and in, uh, in mid Midtown, and Hanzo uh, Gracie Brooklyn, Hanzo Gracie Fight Academy. Uh, uh, we are closed until at least Sunday, uh, March twenty second. Um, let's hope for the best, you know, we, we, we cannot, I don't have a, a crystal ball, I cannot tell you that we are going to open right away, we are going to, uh, it, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, wouldn't be, su suffice, suffice, right, suffice to close now and, you know, open regardless of the, the situation next week, so we are going to hold, like, you know, when Leandro is mounted on me, you know, I you know I stay there, weather the storm, and if we spend thirty minutes there, I will stay there unless he he really catches me. I'm not going to give him anything, right? And that's the the the, the mindset I have for for the current situation, right? I'm not going to tap. You know, Roger is mounted on me. Okay, you know if he he catches me, you know I have no nothing to do. But if I can, I will resist. I'm not going to. Uh, that in desperation, right? So that's, you know, my mindset and it should be, I think, our mindset for these times we are living. Uh, again, we are going to run 
uh, live transmissions every weekday at least 6 p.m. Uh, we are going to decide if we are going to do on the weekends. Probably if we do, we'll be in, in the morning, like 11 a.m. But we, we keep you posted on uh, our Instagram accounts. Uh, again, Master Hanzo will teach the class tomorrow at 6. You know, I, I know that it would be better if he, he, you know, he was here teaching for you. But, you know, I... You know, we, we, we've been teaching on his behalf for a little while. I'm his student since 1992 and same as Leandro, right? You know, so Leandro also, uh, you know, even though Leandro is like uh, eight years younger than me, he, he, he's been uh, at the same time. So he has uh, even more time, uh, more jiu-jitsu time that I, I, I do. And, you know, he started very very younger, uh, much younger than me, right? Uh, tomorrow, see you guys at 6 p.m. You know, hope everybody's having a good Sunday with the family. You know, uh, we are going to turn off. I'm going to get back to my home, to my family, and also our staff. Gabriel is here filming. Daniel is here filming. Any final words, Leandro? No, that's it. We just wanted to, to keep... Close to, to all the students and everybody. So. Well, one thing I want to do is to thank uh, Hanzo for his leadership. You know, it's you know I I I hundred percent believe a lot of people are looking for him on what he's doing, and I think uh, you know the talks we had we have, we have you know been talking. Uh, Day, in daily basis, more than a, you know, a, a yesterday he actually uh, was here with me, uh, and we were you know elaborating what we uh, what to do in the next weeks. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, thank you, thank you, Master Hanzo, and thank you for the community, thank you for the support of the students. Uh, we we been you know. Uh, overwhelmed by the warmth of every, you know, every email, every text message, every comment we receive on our Instagram. Again, I'm Luca Tala, head structure here on Hezo Grace Upper Side. This is my partner, Leandro Slide. Also, you know, brown belt world champion back in the days. How, when was it? 2002? A long time ago. 2002. 2002. And we see you tomorrow.